Toker Talk Radio, the voice of the marijuana nation. What are you people? On dope? Or you can tell. I am here. Uh, or you can talk. I experimented with marijuana and didn't inhale. Or you can talk and talk. Ten federal criminal penalties for possession of up to one ounce of marijuana. While we talk about toke on Toker Talk Radio. So by the way, when it comes to pot, you know, if you're 40 years old, you live in a log cabin in Oregon, you got 12 giant pot plants in your backyard, have a ball. Live from beautiful Portland, Oregon at Rolla J Studios. Freedom! Freedom! Hey, this is great! Freedom! Cannabis. Plus your calls live at 971-533-7111. They're walking on their pants with their cap on backwards, listening to the enema man and Snoopy Snoopy Poop Dog. What's to keep somebody from getting all potted up on weed and then getting behind the wheel? Gateway theory doesn't work. It's a reality. Holland, is it real? Don't tease me. We're locking up people that take a couple of puffs of marijuana, and, and the, the next thing you know, they got 10 years. And now, here's your host, the guru of Ganja Graphics, the sultan of Sativa Statistics, and the worst nightmare of a reefer mad prohibitionist. A polite, perspicacious, productive pothead with a propensity for PowerPoint. Radical Russ Belleville. Oh, hey, fuck you, you're right. Brian the Red's back, so we're booting up, dropping a couple of quarters, man. Hey, it's not my fault I was born a video game nerd. I'm just glad that when I was young, you had to spend quarters on video games, because otherwise I'd have been addicted. Yeah, man, they were nickels by the time I came up. Yeah, it's, it's my same excuse with cocaine. I'm glad cocaine sure was expensive in the 80s. Because, <laughs> uh, oh my God. Hey, uh, but that's uh, neither here nor there. Welcome to Toker Talk Radio, which you just heard is the last Toker Talk Radio for at least the summer. Aww. I know, I'm so sad. Uh, but here's here's the explanation. And some, some folks in the chat room already uh, brought it up, but it's it's festival season. Yes. Right? Once August hits, and I may have to do make this just an annual thing. <laughs> Once August hits, August, September, and then most of October is just jam-packed with events that I got to do. 50 about a season. And then having to do them remotely and then doing two hours at a remote site, it, it just becomes very, very difficult. So um, for August at least and September, perhaps October, we're going to go with a new lineup that features replays of the Russ Belville show. That's hour one, which still is going to keep coming on at you. Hour one will replay every three hours. 3, 6, 9, 12 a.m. p.m. You'll be able to catch the rest of Belleville show. And then I'm, I'm putting some of the video shows into earlier primetime replay. Uh, try to get more hits off of that as well. So just expanding the lineup. So don't worry. You'll still have a show. You'll just only have one of them. The other reason why, too, is because Toker Talk Radio was originally designed as the fact that me and Ganja John and Coleco and later Brian uh, were all hanging out in the second hour doing all our post-production. And I was like, well, gee, since we're sitting here, let's turn on the mics. <laughs> and it just became a bigger show, right? Yeah. But now, I mean, uh, you can already hear I'm, I'm starting to lose some of my voice here. And um, Yeah, Russ has been traveling, you know, uh, the, the change in climates and doing two hours of talking pretty much all by himself because I've got to go find some kind of fun, funding. You know, uh, it's he can't keep up. You know, he's been doing it for a long time and we applaud him for it. But everybody needs a break. Yep. So we're gonna go. To, we're gonna go to just one hour a day here and continue to produce uh, the Russ Belleville show. We'll continue uh, giving you uh, Herb Thrasher Flower Hour. Uh, everything else is kind of a summer hiatus right now. We're giving you replays of Red Eyes, replays of Big Daddy Fink, replays of Viper Hour. Uh, just as it's summertime, and I'm just on the road now. <clears throat> speaking of on the road, I'll be in Miami next week. Uh, next Wednesday, our show starts coming to you from Miami. Uh, so August like six, which is Tuesday night, I fly out and it's one of those overnights where I land in the morning. Um, so I will be in Miami all the way until Seattle Hemp Fest. Oh my God. Yeah. So I'll be in Miami. Actually, I'll be touring Florida. I'm going all, all around Florida to interview a bunch of people. Uh, so there'll be shows coming to you from Florida where I will try not to get arrested. 
And uh, so shows that come to you from Florida. And then the next show will come to you from Seattle, where we'll be covering the Seattle Hemp Fest. Then we got a week in the studio. Then I do the weekend. One of the days of the weekend, I'm Skyping into the uh, World Hemp Congress. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing, too, is I need time to do some research. And like I'm doing presentations and speeches. I got it. And I'm supposed to be writing a book. (laughs) That's the other thing. In my spare time. I'm supposed to be writing a book. Actually, I've gotten a couple ideas for that book that might make it a little bit easier for you to complete. And we'll talk about I have a working sure. title. It's called Cannabis is Amazing Medicine, but Medical Marijuana is Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might get some hate mail on that. <laughs> well, you know, everybody's got an opinion. Some, some people do think that the medical is just a, you know, a sham. But oh, you know, just a joke, uh, I was man. just looking at this uh, article here. Uh, where was it? Let's see here. It's, uh, is marijuana the cure for everything from fibromyalgia, migraines to IBS, or what is clinical endocannabinoid deficiency? Aha! Uh-huh. They actually have a name for it. Fantastic. CEDC, which, uh, you know, it says is a proposed spectrum disorder that has been implicated in a wide range of illnesses, including fibromyalgia, migraine, and irritable bowel syndrome. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Libra in the chat room is saying, uh, way to go for the shocking soundbite. I know that wouldn't be a shocking soundbite title because, you know, with that kind of title, you yeah. might, I might get invited on Fox. Oh yeah. No doubt. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're, if you're saying, yeah, I'm, I'm a legalizer, but you know, fuck this part of legalization. Well, they the, might just have you. The point of it would be that it's like, you're just trying to expose that, you know, some people's views don't match up with, uh, how some people's body chemistry works no i'm no. trying to point out how uh cannabis is amazing medicine no doubt about it from everything from the most minor of aches and pains and the most common of mental illnesses depression you know loginess whatever the hell right <laughs> sleep disorders whatever right all the way to the most amazing you know the most horrendous uh of illnesses you know cancer and aids and multiple sclerosis and all these things so that's one side of it it's like yes cannabis is amazing medicine the medical marijuana is bullshit part is that trying to keep those people separate from the people who just like to smoke pot or trying to determine amongst those people which one of them are sick enough to get it and which one of them well you know you just have headaches you can suffer that's the bullshit part so yeah. that would be a fun book to write to try to get that across that would be plainly that would be great <laughs> Yeah. We'll see. I agree. We'll see. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll uh, have phone calls and stories and Token smoke talk. weed. So stick around. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. The Law Offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak to my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com.
back, everybody. That's music from Crown the Lost with Consumed. Uh, that's some Herb Thrasher Flower Hour music. We'll be playing that kind of rock, rock tonight, 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Two hours of rock and metal with me and Herb Thrasher, who's Fine made dealer. of metal and marijuana. <laughs> All right, so let me get back to my thesis. <laughs> Cannabis is amazing medicine, but medical marijuana is bullshit. Here's part of that, okay? So... In uh, Oregon, our law says, and, and many of the medical marijuana laws work this way, says that you can be a patient, right? And you can appoint someone to be your caregiver, okay? So the caregiver idea is that, you know, you got some sort of disability. You have a spouse, a loved one, a friend, maybe even a, a professional of some sort, a nursing assistant, whatever, but you have somebody that is your caregiver that helps you out with your medical care and your day-to-day living and so forth. And so the patient is protected from prosecution for the possession of up to a pound and a half of marijuana. And so is the caregiver, not a pound and a half each, but if the caregiver has a half pound and the patient has a half pound, not a problem, not an issue perfectly legal. Now, the caregiver doesn't have to have any medical certification, medical training, registration. All they have to have is the their name filled out on the form by the patient. There are some limitations. I think there's limitations on, you know, uh, well, I don't know exactly what the limitations are. I think there might be as far as uh, whether they're a minor or not. Yeah, age restrictions. Age restrictions. So, but anyway, most anybody could become a caregiver. There's nothing in it that says a caregiver has to live in the same residence, the same city, the same county even. In fact, the caregiver doesn't even have to be a resident of the state of Oregon. Neither does the patient. <laughs> okay. So, I, supposing I became a patient, could register... Vladimir Putin as my caregiver. If and if Vlad wanted to come by and visit Oregon, he could have up to a pound and a half of marijuana on him. Okay? That's the way the system is working, and this effectively is working to protect a whole lot of people who are recreational marijuana smokers from being arrested and prosecuted. Okay? Because, check it out. Under the law... There's no crime in smoking marijuana, at least not in the state of Oregon. There are in a couple of states, I believe, a couple of states where it's illegal to smoke marijuana. But but here, consuming it is not a crime. Right. Most of the crime in marijuana is the possession of it. Because, I mean, you couldn't have consumed it unless you possessed it. So why bother having a smoking pot crime when to smoke it, it had to be in your possession? Likewise, there's no law against buying marijuana. Uh There's laws against selling it, and there's laws against possessing it. And if you bought it, you have to possess it. So the possession covers the buying. The possession covers the smoking, right? Well, under Oregon law, as caregiver, you cannot be prosecuted for the possession of marijuana. So there's nothing to prosecute the caregiver for if the cop happens to find him with a pound of weed on him. Now, whether or not the administrative board of the Oregon Health Authority or the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program could run some sort of uh, revocation of your card based on, you know, the fraudulent use of it and displaying that in public or whatever. I'm not going to put that out of their reach. I think that could happen, I suppose. But you're not going to get criminal charges around it, at least as far as I understand. So there are 55,000 patients in Oregon right about now. Each one of them can name a caregiver. Now, some people name themselves. Some people don't bother to name a caregiver, uh, but many do. Even if half do, we're talking about 30,000 or so, maybe a little less than 30,000. Let's say 30,000 people who can carry around a pound and a half weed and um, are technically not supposed to be marijuana smokers in any way, shape, or form. So... That's what I'm talking about is that we have uh, the, we have these medical marijuana laws and the, the underlying 
BS of a, mar a medical marijuana law is that it implicitly recognizes the need to continue punishing healthy people for marijuana. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it's it's tough because, of course, the, the rejoinder is always, well, how could, you know, we've got to get the sick and dying off the battlefield and the war on drugs. Yeah. Well, that kind of says that, okay, there's a battlefield and there's a war on drugs and we're going to leave some of the people on it. Yeah, it, you know, it's throwing the healthy people to the front lines to get thrown under the bus, too. That's ridiculous. And we went along, you know, for years and years and years and mm -hmm. years of, you know, supporting every medical marijuana law. And as we've supported it, each medical marijuana law has gotten further away from what it is that would protect us. And so there it has to become some point at which recreational consumers who make up the vast majority of marijuana consumers have to ask whether or not medical marijuana laws are doing more harm than good on their particular issue. Now, it's an easy set for, you know, it's an easy issue for the cancer patient. If you're a cancer patient in Illinois, you're thrilled. If you're an AIDS patient in Illinois right now, you're thrilled about this bill passing. So, and, and it's not to demean that. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing that this has happened. But on the big picture scale, how much further can medical marijuana go? And so the comparison that I make, you know, looking at Latin America is kind of instructive, I think, in that they don't do the medical marijuana dance. They consider drug use to be addictive. They, in a sense, in a weird sense, they're on the Dennis Perone camp of all use is medical. It's just in this case, it's a medical issue. They're addicts, right? That Whatever, at least they still think that use is medical, right? If it's personal use. And so the, the courts, if they declare you an addict, if they, if you've got an, what in some countries is a statutory amount that below which, okay, you're just an addict. You're not any kind of dealer. You've only got five grams of pot on you, right? <laughs> you're not any kind of really serious dealer, right? Maybe That's personal amount. Maybe it's just low. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just dealers low. Didn't know. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I just smoked. It's, he could use the University of Oregon defense. I smoked it all, man. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but a great uh, defense. It, so this, but how this has progressed in those countries has been around the folly and futility and cruelty of prosecuting citizens for small amounts of personal use of drugs. The Argentine Supreme Court said it was just against the, you know, their constitution. These other countries that I looked up are saying, you know, it's just against their civil rights. It's against their rights. Ecuador, for example. And I'm really pleased that uh, Time Magazine has just published an op-ed by Ethan Nadelman from the Drug Policy Alliance. And when we come back from break, I'm going to read you that because it, it echoes a lot of the things that I'm saying about politicians needing to be leaders on this issue, especially in the United States where you've got the people behind you on the issue. <laughs> you know, the people in the United States now, by overwhelming margins, support medical marijuana and not support you know well only medical marijuana if you're chained in the radiate chained to the radiator and it's your last resort and you have cancer and aids right not none of this stuff and, and it's on a second sunday with a blue moon yeah people support medical marijuana as a blanket term of medical use of cannabis if their doctor says it's cool they can use it they believe in trusting the doctor patient relationship and the doctor to know what's best for their patients <gasps> imagine that and that's what we uh that's got such great support in America now and legalization now, especially out West and the Northeast has good majority supports, you know, 55% in the West, 50, 54, something like that in the Northeast. There's no reason a politician can't get in front of that issue, see where the people are already going and pretend to be some sort of great leader by saying, I support you know, rational drug policies and bring that majority along with him. And I'm telling you, folks, it's going to be a Republican who does it. Oh. It's going to be Republicans who do it. It's going to be Republicans looking to break away from the stranglehold of the Tea Party and the extremism and their gerrymandered districts that favor these rabid right wingers. It's going to be a guy looking to pick up some votes off of the middle, pick up some of the younger voters who's going to have a rational drug policy, who's going to pick up those votes and shock the hell out of the establishment. You mark my words. That's how it's going down, people. I can see it already. Oh, it's our last 420, man. Man, 
live anyway for a while. You know what's a good word? Anti-disestablishmentarianism. It's not quite as good as pneumonia ultramicroscopic silico volcanocaniosis. But it's no supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. He's got that, that one. Have you ever met that funny reefer man, reefer man? If he said he swam to China, he would sell you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. No Herb Thrasher from the Herb Thrasher Flower Hour. Now get ready for Herb Age Designs for the proud cannabis consumer. Herb, Herb Age Designs, Designs, lifestyle gear for the 420 friendly. Herb, Herb Age Designs, Designs, home of the famous lighter leash. Herb, Herb Age, Age Designs. Designs, get your Herb Age t-shirts and hoodies and show your pride. Herb, Herb Age Designs. Designs, we've got frisbee golf discs and durable hemp gear. Herb Age Designs. We've got shot glasses, drinking glasses, coffee mugs, and beer cozies. Check us out on Facebook and online at HerbAgeDesigns.com. And follow Herb Age and Herb Thrasher on Twitter. We'll see you at this year's Hemp Fest. Crank it up. received it, Snoop Dogg, uh, George, uh, George Reynolds, George <laughs> Hamilton, I don't know, but anyway, but it's time, I'm very happy I got it. I'm really proud of this, I've never received anything before in my fucking life, to tell you the truth, so, but this is a very nice piece, I'm going to take this home, keep this around, fill it up with some killer weed, take it all down, and then you're going to hear sweet music coming from International Tony Lifton, thank you. Now, Andy, did you hear about this one? All patients here. Attention, toda la gente médica. La zona de mi hierba es legal en América. My intention is to get your attention like a corn dog at a mustard convention. So let's go. Can you feel it? But it's my right, so I should bloom. Perks all cush under a thousand one hood. All organic fat zones with a script you own. It's all cured, all pure up in my cannabis zone. Fuel up, checking my tires in my cannabis zone. Uphill to get the kill like I'm hunting for drugs. Alligators on the roll up in my cannabis zone. Flip out the book, I'm on the grind like I'm ready to roll. Only zigzag. Papers or pate bowl, but to vaporize it honestly is the purest form. Edibles, a cup of coffee in my cannabis zone. Like one through ten levels of the cannabisoid. Like milligrams to pills, there's levels of THC. The levels of intoxication's up to me. Never on this leave, would you ever OD? And it could cure your suicidal thoughts eternally. I should know, it cures PTSD. Post traumatic stress disorder since my mom left me. I'm a medical patient, connected spiritually up in my zone. Off a cannabis tree, you can't stop me. Medicated feeling good, it's my right, so I should bloom. Perks all cush under a thousand one hood. All organic fat zones with a script you own. It's all cured, all pure up in my cannabis zone. Medicated feeling good, it's my right, so I should bloom. Perks all cush under a thousand one hood. All organic fat zones with a script you own. It's all cured, all pure up in my cannabis zone. Medicate myself with pure top shelf. Now it's me at the top of the clientele. Word of mouth spread out, let the client tell. The whole block knows now that the herb is best. But the perks got the push to expand your chest. Make you pop ten times, maybe lose your breath. Feel the touch and the effect of the confidence that I have on this God sent Buddha bless. It's my miracle lead, call it my medicine. In my cannabis zone, I got my prescription. Call it pop, call it dope in your description. But to me, it's the reason that I'm living and eating. Like my roots 
roots, plants, roots are indigenous. For my only mother earth is why I'm hitting this. Yeah, For my long lost really. souls and spirits have flowed on in my cannabis. That's some cannabis on the midnight. Welcome back, Toker Talk Radio, hanging out with Brian the Red. Hey, hey. Got Left Wing Larry. Hey, hey, hey. And we got Bacon Dan. Well, hello. Wrong mic. Damn. Try it again. Oh, oh wait. Now, there you are. There you are. Hello, everybody. There he is. It's Bacon Dan. In the house. Are you sure you're there, Don? Yeah. He's uh, yeah. Uh, there I am. I he's on. Him. Okay. I can hear him. And remember, it's legal left-wing Larry. Yes. Legal left-wing. Legal left-wing Larry. That's yeah, right. We're celebrating. Uh, Larry's got his papers. He's officially papered now. Hey, congratulations. He has his papers. No card, but paper. Yes. The papers are, or the cards are on their way, which are also made of paper, but... <laughs> Fantastico, and uh, so that's uh, so papers for uh, Larry and for Brian and for me. Yeah, we're right. all papered. <laughs> wow. So, uh, uh, thank you, Oregon. When we last checked in with Bacon Dan, he had just received employment offer on the spot. Yes. You've been working there for a while. How's it been going? Uh, good. Today's my first day off in nine days. Nine days? Hey, that's so. what you get for being the man. I know. <laughs> uh, but it's going really well. Like, I really like my crew. Um, it's a very cannabis-friendly crew. I'll put it that way. Well, it's a restaurant. Oh, I, well, you'd be surprised. There are restaurants yeah, here in Portland some, who drug test. Yeah, there's some prissy-ass And they have waiters? Yeah, I yes. know. That's what I thought. <laughs> And cooks? Yes, they're, they're all on... And dishwashers? Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> rest, they're all on Adderall. Where do they find them? <laughs> yeah, I know. Where do they come from? Yeah, they're all In on Coke. Portland? <laughs> oh, yeah. But no, it's going really well. Like, I'm really liking it, and now, you know, it's my permanency here in Portland. So, it's you know, for a while there, I was going, oh, you know, really getting worried, not finding anything, and then, you know, everything's just kind of coming together now. So, it's it's very nice. And Great. on stuff. cam, we can see some tasty food. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I went to my favorite food cart, the Frying Scotsman here in Portland, Oregon. And this is the best fish and chips that you can find in Portland. Forget the one in Hawthorne that says it's Portland's best fish and chips. Their fish and chips sucks. <laughs> I would know. I eat copious amounts of fish. This. And he's from Scotland. You gotta, like, a guy who's... Does he have the accent still? Oh, yeah. Oh, he's a Scot. Eh. Like, I'd go for that alone. He co- he came here much how I did. Like, he came for a visit, fell in love with the place, found a way to stay, and has one of the top food carts um, in the city now. Where's it located? Uh, that is in the Superpod. Uh, downtown, it's like 12th and Adler, maybe? Something like that. Yeah, yeah it's really, really uh, good. Alder. Alder. Russian, I'll find it. Oh, yeah, I'll take you guys to it. It's a real <laughs> good one. Well, we will check that out, Frank Scotsman. Although... They're gonna. He's really got to compete with uh, Bow Pickers out in Astoria. Oh yeah, oh. You, have, you have not been to Bow Pickers. I haven't been to the coast yet, and Carrie yelled at me for that. Oh, oh well, we'll get you well, out the coast. Yeah, so she can yell at you in person. Mm-hmm. All right, so that <laughs> brings me to uh, speaking of Carrie and everybody. Uh, both left wing Larry and I have been discussing. You know, having a party this weekend as a housewarming right. for this place. I was wondering if you were going to try but something before you took Would it be off Saturday this week? or would it be Sunday? You That's know, what we have to decide. Hmm. I, I almost had a vision of a Monday. Monday? Monday party. But people M- work. People work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've been out of work for almost three years. It's kind of, you know, wah, wah. What's your yeah. schedule like? Uh, I have the best schedule. Okay. Monday to Thursday, I work from 4 to close, off every Friday, off every Saturday, Sunday, uh, 10 to 8. Wow. All right. So Saturday makes more sense. Saturday makes Saturday makes more sense just in general. I think we can get everybody. I mean, All right. know, John Kerry, Coleco. John everybody. Kerry's coming? Yes, John, John Kerry. Wow, the Secretary of State here. I've got the Treasury yeah. guy over <laughs> here. Thank you. I have uh, John Kerry, Larry Summers. I've got Larry <laughs> Summers over here. And John Hamm. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Brian Wilson. And, and Brian, Brian Wilson. Wilson. Oh, my God. It's a celebrity. Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> Only here at 420 Radio. Those, those people have no idea that we're all going to be together at the same time. You know, I ought to do that someday. we got to find somebody else named Kevin Bacon so that we can be, like, one away from a breaking number. <laughs> I had to do that someday to put out a big blast that exclusive on the next show. John Hamm, Brian Wilson, Larry Summers. (laughs) Wouldn't you all just hate us? That would be hilarious. We we welcome the hate. 
All right, so we'll have our we'll have our uh, housewarming party tomorrow. Tomorrow at four twenty, I guess. Woo! Okay, that's a plan. That would make sense. See, that's how quick we make plans. We decided yesterday that this was going to be the last uh, Toker Talk Radio, and we're deciding today that tomorrow we're having a housewarming party. Yeah, that's how we roll. That's how we roll. We move quickly. We make our I'm minds up. The new studio, by the way. What's oh, that? The new studio. This is like this is so very nice. I'm digging the new studio myself, especially. Yeah. Um, I've got it wired up so that. I can set up the other uh, laptop over there. Oh, perfect. We can record, and record things, things separately. Stuff, yeah. And pump what's going there through the speakers so we don't have to always listen to the stream. Very nice. So I was down here jamming bass and uh, cranking tunes the other night. Very nice. nice. <laughs> That's very, very fun. All right. So, um, yeah. So for people that are joining just a little bit late, yeah, this is the last uh, Toker Talk. Well, it's not the last. I'm just going to say it's going on summer hiatus. Yeah. Or festival hiatus, whatever you want to call it. We'll be back. I mean, between going to Miami, Seattle Hemp Fest, Seattle Cannabis Cup, Boston Freedom Rally. Oh, I got to, you know, study for the World Hemp Congress. I got like six to seven weeks coming up that are just nonstop. So yeah. just getting the first hour show in is going to be a lot of work. So we will we will come back with Toker Talk Radio when it makes sense. So we hope you enjoy that. At the meantime, we are going to take a short break at this point. Because um, Bacon Dan's not high enough. That's very true. Hash. And neither uh, is Left Wing Larry. And neither is Left These Wing Larry. These things need to be rectified, people. Oh, we're getting right to that. Must fix now. Lighters up. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. It's simply business. It's simply business. It's simply business. You know why they won't let us grow. It's simply business. It's simply business. You know why they won't let us grow. It's simply business. What makes something funny? How does humor impact health and psychological well-being? How can you incorporate humor into everyday life? A concise, reader-friendly introduction to an important but often underappreciated topic in modern psychology, Humor 101 explains the role of comedy, jokes, and wit in the sciences and discusses why they are so important to understand. Psychology professor Dr. Mitch Earlywine draws from his personal experiences in stand-up comedy to focus on how humor can regulate emotion, reduce anxiety, and diffuse tense situations, expose pretensions, build personal relationships, and much more. He irreverently debunks the pseudoscience on the topic of humor and leaves readers not only funnier, but better informed. It's part of the Psych 101 series from Springer Publishing, Humor 101, by Dr. Mitch Earlywine, Ph.D. Bum, bum, bum. What's happening, cool cats? This is Big Daddy, and I want you to cruise on over to the Funky Roller Rink. We'll be grooving all night long. Doors open at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific, every Thursday night. Right here on RadicalRust.com. Funky. Delicious. That's music from Queen Ifrika. We burn some herbs. Burn some herb with me. Burn some herb with me. Tonight. I like the term herb. Or herb. You know, I, you know, I don't like the term. I, I, I don't like the term dog shit. <laughs> right there, people. There's, there's dog shit and there's cat piss. 
yes. that, that are both strains that are frequented here in the Northwest. But all it is is a super silver haze phenotype. Mm. But it's called dog shit. We also have ATF, which is Northern Cali Sativa, cross with Russian Rude Rallis. Yeah, Rudy. Rudy Rallis. Yeah, see, people don't know that there's Rudy in there. Yeah. And then yeah. the classic Orange Crush, yeah. favorite of mine. Let yeah. me smell that orange crush. Yeah, the yeah, Ruderalis right. Ruderalis are great. Uh, you know, they're more of a bushy plant. They don't have such a high yield, but they're, you know, very medicinal. You know, uh, Jack Hare pretty much brought the subspecies to light to, you know, in his book when he did his, some of his traveling there uh, over to uh, Europe and uh, those colder areas. <laughs> very nice. Yes. Yeah, so so for you, those of you who really didn't know, there's cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, and cannabis ruderalis. So. The more you talk. We have got to make a thing for that. We we will be. We will be. You know, in my spare time. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you have so much. <laughs> or Dan, we have access to a studio while Russ is away. That is very true. It's absolutely true. Although I won't have the laptop sitting there. You have to hook up another laptop to record on. Well, I'm still borrowing this one from somebody. So. There you go. Nice. So I've got, uh, a, uh, I've got a notebook. No, uh, there you go. With We've a got CD burner on it. I've even got extra towers at my house I could bring here. Nice. All right, I got to get to. Uh, I had teased yes. this uh, news. This news from Ethan Nadelman, uh, who, of course, if there's anybody in the legalization effort who I wished I was or could pattern myself upon, it would be Ethan Nadelman. Uh, if, if just only for his public speaking abilities are, are pretty amazing, but he's also an incredibly intelligent guy. But uh, this is his op-ed that was just published on Time Magazine, uh, What Legalizing Pot in Uruguay Means for the World. This small Latin American country is now on the forefront of global drug policy reform. Late Wednesday night, following months of intensive debate and negotiation, the Uruguayan House of Representatives passed a bill to legalize marijuana. If approved by the Senate, President Jose Mujica will certainly sign it, at which point Uruguay will become the first country in the world to replace its marijuana prohibition law with a legal regulatory system. Uruguay's bold move does much more than just follow in the footsteps of Colorado and Washington State, which last November became the first political jurisdictions in the world to approve the legalization of marijuana. It provides significantly a model for how to engage in debate over marijuana policy in a mature and responsible way. When President Mujica first issued his proposal last June, he made clear that he welcomed vigorous debate over both its merits and the particulars. International experts were invited from abroad for intensive discussions with people from all walks of civil society and government. A range of specific proposals were considered, all with an eye toward transforming an illegal industry into a legal one to better protect public safety and health. Political rhetoric and grandstanding permeated the debate, as would be expected in any vibrant democratic process, but substantive issues dominated. The bill passed on Wednesday effectively integrates elements of Colorado's and Washington's laws with innovations from Europe and provisions unique to Uruguay. Adults are permitted to cultivate up to six plants. Cooperatives can provide marijuana for a limited number of members, and pharmacies can sell it. Sales to minors, driving under the influence, and all forms of advertising are prohibited. This new model will be of great interest to advocates and legislators in other countries, and of course, in the growing number of U.S. states in which a majority of citizens now favor legalizing marijuana. What I, as an American, find most striking about Uruguay's historic move is the demonstration of political leadership by President Mujica. In the United States, marijuana policy reform is an issue on which the people lead and the politicians follow. Colorado and Washington changed their laws through the ballot initiative process, with roughly 55% of voters supporting the reform, while most elected officials sat on the sidelines. Even today, with a majority of Americans in favor of legalizing marijuana, not one U.S. governor or U.S. senator is prepared to publicly support the legalization of, mar of marijuana apart from the governors of Washington and Colorado, who are now obliged to implement the new laws in their states. By contrast, when President Mujica made his proposal, he reportedly did it without consulting any polls or political consultants. He simply listened to respected experts about what the optimal marijuana policy would be, and then said, let's do it. 
President Mujica is not the only Latin American leader to demonstrate courage in calling for alternatives to the drug war. Presidents Juan Manuel Santos of Colombia and Otto Perez Molina of Guatemala have boldly demanded that legalization, decriminalization, and other alternatives to the ineffective, costly, and destructive prohibitionist drug policies be considered. More recently, the Organization of American States Secretary General Jose Miguel Insulza has catapulted regional discussion of drug policy to an intellectual level unprecedented amongst multilateral organizations. But President Mujica's proposal is unique in changing not just public debate, but also actual laws and policies. All this serves as a wake-up call for Europe, which, has, which was at the forefront of global drug policy reform in the latter part of the 20th century, but has now been leapfrogged by developments in the Americas. Serious proposals for legal regulation of marijuana are proliferating in countries like Switzerland, Spain, the Czech Republic, Denmark, and the Netherlands. And in Morocco, long one of the world's leading producers of marijuana, legalization proposals are now being taken seriously by the national government. So who's next? In the U.S., numerous states are likely to legalize marijuana in coming years, with Oregon perhaps first in line. In Canada, Prime Minister Stephen Harper. No, 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 not. No, sorry. Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Oh, douchebag. Seems like a throwback to the drug war fanatics who dominated U.S. drug policy in the 80s and 90s. But both opposition parties seem ready to legalize marijuana once they regain power. And I'd keep my eye on the Dutch, who 30 plus years ago pioneered the legal regulation of retail sales of marijuana through the coffee shop system, and who may now be inspired by Colorado, Washington, and Uruguay to finally legalize and regulate the industry. That's all by Ethan Nadelman, the founder and executive director of Drug Policy Alliance, as published in Time Magazine. So, um, yeah, we did a story earlier today, by the way. Uh, uh, What's the guy's first name? Justin Trudeau. Yeah, I was going to say, did you hear about Justin Trudeau? Because I think that is amazing. The head of the Liberal Party. I I must assume he's the son of Pierre Trudeau? Yeah. Okay, so I was going to say. It's <laughs> like some, direct, yeah. That's like a George W. Bush thing going on here. But in a good way. But in a good way. <laughs> kind of like a Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is it's a really good step. I mean, Harper just needs to go. He's such a douche. Yeah, he and he, he Harper's put in uh, mandatory minimums in Canada. Uh huh. And well, yeah, I shouldn't say just Harper because he got it through Parliament, but he's majority party, right? Yeah, kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, got mandatory minimums in Canada because they looked at what it did in the United States and said, "Oh, well, that's a good thing." I mean, yeah. What more evidence do you need to not, you know, be voting for mandatory minimum well, sentencing Stephen than Harper. looking at the two point three million people we have prison with one point five million of them being for drug crimes? I mean, Harper is also the kind of idiot, though, that would sit there and rather than negotiate with the leaders of the First Nation, he let them, the leader of the First Nation of Canada, um, starve, a hunger strike in front of the Parliament buildings, would not talk to her for, I think, 45 days. And he didn't care. He does not care. I mean, he's just... That's a special kind of douche right there. Oh, well, look, he was going to get a vote of no confidence. What does yeah. he do? Uh, I'm just going to get rid of everybody and dissolve Parliament, you know? Yeah. I, mean, that, I think that's some something friends. that you can actually... I mean, you can actually do that. Yeah. I mean, imagine if President Obama could just dissolve the House of Representatives <laughs> and make him start <laughs> oh my over. God. Wow. Uh, but in the same oh key, I would love if our government allowed for the vote of no confidence because yeah. I think that would be a really good thing, especially when you've got, you know... Some of these uh, good old boys who hmm. are hanging on to policies and thoughts from about 55 years ago. Or more. And don't want to get with the times. Yeah, it's the it's the death throes of the, the prohibitionist generation. I was watching um, uh, Bill Maher's show the other day, and he was talking to this young woman who's an activist on uh, women's rights. Mm-hmm. You know, right to choose, uh, basically, the ability to control your own body. And uh, she was, you know, in Texas and was, you know, oh. I will judge you, where, you know, talking to the legislature. Where they confiscated all of the tampons and Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, I, job, but she was on the Bill Maher show, but uh, they were talking about this with respect to those laws, mm-hmm. but it also applies to drug laws in that there's just a bunch of old crusty fucks are going to have to die. Yeah. No, it's true. It's just they're not they're never going to change. They're always going to think marijuana is awful. They're always going to, you know, think what they think and you just have to wait till they die. Now, I'm not wishing it to happen any sooner than naturally necessary. But, <laughs> but if it were to come sooner, days, yeah. I wouldn't be upset about that. 
It's just, uh, you know, some people's minds just won't evolve on the issue. And uh, especially with respect to marijuana, it's happening now so quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that as as it becomes legal, you know, it becomes, I mean, it is legal in Washington, Colorado, but as that permeates the national consciousness, I think there's going to be a whole bunch of people who are like, well, why are we keeping it illegal now? Yep. Because Washington didn't erupt in flames. Denver hasn't had massive riots. Yeah, know? no, I was noticing the last couple of weeks I've seen more out-of-state plates than I have in years. And they're from places, <laughs> like, far away, you know, like, freaking other coasts, like Nebraska, Pennsylvania, yeah. New York, New you Jersey. Mean, like, the one sitting in the driveway? With yeah, the Florida. Florida. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I think that the, that the reasoning is that they're coming down here on their summer break, and they're mm -hmm. looking around, and they're seeing... If the sky is actually fallen, and it's not, yeah. it's, you know, we're actually getting along better than most parts of the country, I think, you know, it, well, at least in certain circles. There are always going to be those bickering, you know, childlike <laughs> malcontents, malcontents, oh, yeah. yes, with their opinions up their ass. Well, look but, at that, uh, look at that so-called preacher who they interviewed after um, they had the ads at the NASCAR race. The NASCAR. And, you know, he's a former drug addict turned preacher, so-and-so. And it's like, he's sitting there and, and, I mean, going on and on. I can't believe they should be embarrassed. You know, how could they do this? It's, you know, how think of the children. He did <laughs> use think of the children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was just like, dude, all it said was, guess what? This is safer than beer. There's yeah. no calories like in beer, except for what comes when you eat after. Yeah. I mean, there's like, so what? It's like, I mean, if you, you know, it's great if you can't handle it, but guess what? There is responsible adults like me, like everybody in this studio, well, who function, they're happy, they're healthy, and guess what? They're cannabis consumers. And we're no better or worse than the non. And my view on it is, and I, I know many people, this is, I'm never going to push it on anybody. But what I will do is educate. Yeah. And if I can break down some stereotypes, because I break stereotypes all the time. I'm a walking stereotype breaker. <laughs> but if, you know, if Except I can... Except for the ones about Canadians and hockey. Oh, yeah. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> yeah. I will go for hours talking hey, he'll, about he'll hockey. He'll take you down with his hockey stick. Oh, hey. I will snap you in the wrist. <laughs> but it's... High sticking. But <laughs> that's but that's how I I roll. Like that's just who I am. But I I love educating people. Yeah. Well, I think that the lack of education is a big part of it because there's these people, you know, like that preacher. He may have never ever in his life tried cannabis. Right. He said he was a reformed drug addict, but that could be some hard drug that he tried, you know, and then clumped them all in together because of propaganda that was spread by our government and these, you know, anti-narcotic policies, you know, and the truth of the matter is that cannabis is not a narcotic, you know, it, uh, it, it helps with the um, regulation, Herb. you know, yeah. but uh, just seriously, look up endocannabinoid yeah. system. It's we in have that board. for a reason. Yeah. yeah. There's hey, a reason your body hangs on to it for as long as I don't it know does. if you caught yesterday's show, but uh, we had a guest on from the Royal Cush Band mm -hmm. out of Nova Scotia. Nice. You know who's also from Nova Scotia? No. The Trailer Park Boys. Oh, very yeah. Good. Good. And they're back for a new season. And I still have my upcoming interview, <laughs> my Skype call with them. Yes. And uh, through Ganja John, he has assured me that when they come to Portland, I'm guaranteed either through the, being part of SwearNet or through him, I will get to meet the Trailer Park Boys. Yeah. And maybe we'll even get a little interview for 420 Radio. That'd be awesome. Well, I think that, you know, if you want during your, uh, if you find out when your swear net and you know call is going to be we can rig it so that there uh there's a computer there we can record it on nice but i think we need to take a little break yeah we're gonna, one more break here and when we come back i've got a disgusting story from new zealand Ugh. uh just because and then um <laughs> then we'll uh, we'll talk we about uh, some stuff so you know what it is. An it's upcoming talk fundraiser about. for a oh, that's uh, right. for a, a great cannabis activist we will talk about the fundraiser for sure We'll, we'll open with that, so I don't forget. <laughs> anyway, uh, get sexy for a second. We'll be right back. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420-friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers, because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation.
Funky Roller Ring. What's happening, Groovy Cats? This is your Funk Master of Ceremonies, Big Daddy. And I want you to join me every Thursday night at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific, right here at the Funky Roller Ring. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your home of soul, funk, and disco, baby. Funky It's always a party at the Funky Roller Ring. Just the other day, there was a lot of good folks smoking pot. I was there to play. We got a leader up in Ottawa, likes to get his own way. He's up there making laws to put them all away. Chill up, Stevie Bond. We ain't all that bad. Open up your redneck mind. Laugh and don't be sad. Obama said that he in hell, you know that's the point. And I wish Stephen Harper smoked the joint. Wish you'd come to real life, man, we ain't all like you. There's over 70% of us, and only one of you. If you want to save the country, I'll give you a clue. Stop wasting all our money on your hundred grand hairdo. Come on, Stevie Bond, burn one up with me. And if you do, I think you'll find we ain't your enemy. Obama said that he'd hit, you know that's the point. And I wish Stephen Harper smoked a joint. In closing, I'd like to say you need a little work. I may be wrong, but you're coming across just like a pompous jerk. You say that you're a John Lennon fan, you heard 10 for 2. Cause the way that you've been acting, he wouldn't be no fan of you. Come on, Stevie Roy, we ain't all that bad. Open up your redneck mind, laugh and don't be sad. Obama said that he in hell, you know that's the point. I wish Stephen Harper smoked a joint. I wish Stephen Harper smoked a joint. There we go, a little Canadian music. That was awesome. From the Green Outlaws, I wish Stephen Harper'd smoke a joint. I do too. <laughs> I think drug tests ought to be mandatory for politicians. They ought to be uh, tested on whether or not they can hold a hit long enough <laughs> to chill the fuck out and stop well, bombing people and stealing money and making things worse. <laughs> yep. Well, wow. it's like, oh no! I remember I was in when I was in uh, in Houston doing the gig, and and the cop there was all like, "Well, we don't want to stone to society." Oh heaven forbid! <laughs> people were more mellow and laughing and having fun and. Anyway, we have a very important uh, fundraiser to tell you about, and for that, I will turn you to Brian the Red, because I don't know a whole lot about it. I just heard about it recently. Um, yeah, well, it was just recently put together. It's coming up uh, near the end of this month, Saturday, August 24th, uh, in North Portland. Uh, there's a fundraiser for a well-known activist here, uh, Miss Anna Diaz, who has just uh, got one of the biggest hearts that I have ever known and she helps out put on fundraisers for uh other parts of our cannabis community and, and right now that she needs help with some repairs to her uh mobile unit uh there was some some damage by some mold or something and some siding issues and uh so they're gonna have a silent auction raffle live music and a bake sale kind of like uh what she put on for the uh the organ four down yeah. uh at plues Brews, which we covered uh What's that, a month or so ago? Yeah, about a month, yeah. I think. And, um, you know, so uh, if you can, uh, go to the, the Facebook page. Uh, it's just type in Anna Diaz Fundraiser. That's D-I-A-Z Fundraiser. And then um, one of my Pink Leaf shirts will also be there for the raffle and silent auction, whatever they're holding. And, uh, you know, make sure that we go out and support uh, our own because these these people are fighting and they have very little and uh, you know, I know <laughs> personally they, they've got very little, but oh, yeah. uh, we're, we're going to see what we can do to help them out. 
Um, <clears throat> like I said, August 24th, 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. And that's in North Portland. And go to the Facebook page to get the exact address. All right. Thank you, Brian. We'll get that uh, retweeted oh, and, and reposted as well. And thank you to uh, Sid and Brian for uh, putting this on, definitely. All right. So I have the story from New Zealand. And the reason I bring it up is because, like, so you know, you were talking about stereotypes, right? So uh, sometimes there's stereotypes, and what really pisses you off is when someone exemplifies a stereotype. Oh, did somebody from New Zealand shag a sheep? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, because no. that is their reputation of being sheep shaggers. <laughs> no. Them and the Welsh. <laughs> Please send all hate mail to BaconDanPDX at gmail.com. <laughs> all my New Zealand listeners. That's what those knee-high boots are for. <laughs> yeah, the wellies, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, get, I've, get got, back. I've got a lot of listeners. Stay away. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get back. back. I do love the Kiwis, though. No hatred towards you. All right. It's a Canadian thing. <laughs> it's okay. a love-hate relationship. So, okay, onward. Here's the story, though, because um, I, I, I bring it up because it's so it's such a big stereotype. It's such a caricature. I mean, it's heinous. And I, I, I don't mean to make l- light of it, although I guess I do in a sense. The, the guy's a perv and all. But here's the story. Man admits giving drugs to teenagers for sexual favors. A man who gave drugs drugs to Christchurch schoolgirls in exchange for sexual favors has pleaded guilty today. Kevin Beria Greer, age 45, parked his van outside Burnside High School and lured uniformed teenage girls inside where he offered them cannabis. In return, he got the girls, aged 15 and 16, to expose their breasts and bodies for him to photograph. Police watched the girls enter the van, which had curtains guarding the illicit deals in the back, before they pounced on Greer. They found two teenagers who admitted allowing the photographs to be taken in exchange for drugs. Also, Officers also found 14000 in cash st- stashed inside the van, as well as thousands of dollars worth of cannabis, morphine, and Ritalin. Wow. A creeper van with, He's with got the, curtains. He, the middle-aged and, guy with the creeper van with curtains. And, the, and young, the prescriptions that you know kids are, are already taking. Luring you know, young Ritalin. girls in with the, with the lure of joints to take nude pictures i bet the van had a mural on one side. <laughs> right? like, the van, <laughs> i'm like how much more of a stereotype i mean this is and so you know this kind of stuff gets uh out and then you know the people that hate cannabis go ah see eh, pot make you a perv and go after the young girls and that nah. no that's not true <laughs> Pot doesn't make you a perv. Being a perv makes you a perv. <laughs> yeah, a perv makes you a perv. <laughs> Pot happens to be a way to entice teenage girls. That's all. That's Pot's right. a way to entice, entice a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. Well, just entice people. It doesn't have to be girls. It doesn't have to be young. It doesn't have to be, you know, it, it could be anybody. Hey, there are hot it's... moms out there who like weed, too. I know personally. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. what? Uh, well, sex, give me their names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they've got a they've got a Facebook page. Oh, I know. I I can't help that the the, the milfs love me. Mm. And, well, part of this here is I was reading on your Facebook page about uh, people not recognizing that you are in your third decade. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, my my uh, whole yeah. staff thought I was about twenty three, twenty four. And I had to show them my ID to show them that I'll be 30 in January. Well, you did trim up pretty, pretty, you I, know, yeah, I did. before you started there. So. I, I did. Well, I mean, my hair was, it's still kind of shaggy and stuff. And I'm it'll keep growing. I mean, it'll be pulled back at some point. But it's just, and I asked them, I'm like, what is it about me that, you know, makes you think that? And they said, well, you're very enthusiastic about stuff. And like, you're this like past... I'm in Portland now. I know. <laughs> I mean, I won't lie. This past Sunday, I was walking around the restaurant as I greeted tables and asked them how it was. I was humming the theme to Sanford and Son. <laughs> I mean, it just happens. But I've yeah, I have a youthful lust for life, and I'm guess you know I've never been married, never had kids, so nothing's really aged me. I've had stress. <laughs> it's really aged me. <laughs> but now I'm in Portland, so of course I'm happy. Reborn. Well, in we're very Portland. happy here too at the new Buck and Bronco House for. Ohio State Buckeyes and yes. State Broncos, right? The Buck and Bronco House, the new Roller J Studios. We're going to have a housewarming. If you're in Portland and would like to stop by, uh, contact me at the uh, 420radio.org slash contact. I'll check the emails. I'll give you the directions how to get here. 
Uh, it's really close to Herb Thrasher's place, as a matter of fact. Yes, but that's all the time we got here. Remember, this is the last Toker Talk Radio Hour 2, but we will still have Hour 1. For Brian the Red, Left Wing Larry, and Bacon Dan, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, take care of each other, Tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you giant, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you giant, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you giant, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow